here again with uh, Benson, Benson Robles. So oh, yeah. he's a weightlifter from the US mm -hmm. and he has been spending a few times in, uh, in Europe. Mm -hmm. uh, it's the second time you come to Bordeaux. Yes. If you haven't checked the first episode, uh, spe special edition we did, it was a few weeks ago, you can check now. And uh, Benson just went to Georgia yes. for training camp. Yeah. So we are going to talk about this training camp mm -hmm. and uh, about the Georgian method. Right what you got from this method and yep. what I got from this method. So to put the things back in place, uh, I met Tony Ketodadze, Toko, it was uh, two years ago. He was a uh, weightlifter from Team Georgia. Mm -hmm. He used to be in the junior team in Georgia. Right. And he came to France uh, around three years ago. Okay. Started training for, for the Reims club. Okay. So it's yeah. in the northeast of France. Okay. I met him at the national championships three years ago. Yeah. And he talked to me about uh, training camps in Georgia. Hmm. So we did one with him and with uh, plenty of my athletes. So why did he originally come to France? I think it was because he loved France mm. from, from all the movies, from what he got. Get. People in Georgia love France. Yeah. They love France and they love the US. Right. Mostly because during last war against Russia, right. uh, George W. Bush and Nicolas Sarkozy, French president back then, came to help. So they are really uh, friend, right. friends with the US and, yeah, yeah. and France. Yeah. So we went to Georgia. It was winter 2021. Mm -hmm. I went back the next summer and I went back the third time. So where did you go summer. the first time you went? First time was only in Bakuriani, so okay. in the, in the mount mountain. Right. And I think you went. To no, I didn't go to Bakuriani. Second time it was in Dusheti, where okay. you stay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the third time we did Sakcheri, mm -hmm. which is the, like they call it the city of weightlifters because Lasha comes from this town. Toko comes from there. Toko and plenty of guys from the, from the team. Right. And we did Sakcheri and we went back to Bakuriani need to train with the, the national team too. Yeah. So we talked about this together. Right. And you say that as you would come to Europe from two months, you wouldn't miss the opportunity to be one of the, right. to be the first American weightlifter right. to be able to go train with them. Yeah. Yeah. I, um, having seen you guys, I know Kami spent, uh, your girlfriend Kami, she spent what? Two three months. Three months in, in Georgia uh, earlier this year and seeing all the, the videos she had posted and also seeing the times that you kept bringing, you know, members of uh, the community here out to training camps, like it was really exciting and it looked accessible, right? Like, but also at the same time, like, like you just said, like I'm an American, uh, Toko doesn't speak he speaks English, right? Like, I, I was honestly surprised at what, how much English he learned. But he was the only one speaking English. Uh, no, there was there was somebody else. I mean, um, from, from the Georgian. Oh, group. of course, yeah, yeah. The the second person who had decent English was Rezi. Um, he spoke some straight sentences with me. It's Revaz Davidadze, right? Right, yeah. right, right. Um, and yeah, so just witnessing how many times you have been going out there, like I was just like, oh, that's something I want to do one day, like soon. Um, I think it's possible. And when I first came out here, my initial plan was to be here for two months, uh, work alongside you guys, like do some podcasts, right? Like talk about uh, American weightlifting. Um, and then like one day I went out to the beach with uh, Rovan and I woke up from a nap uh, with a book on my face and I was just like, there's a camp coming up while I'm here um, in, in Europe. And I woke up and I was just like, I wanna, I wanna be there. It, it, it's, it's an opportunity I don't wanna waste. Uh, the next one was gonna be in October. So like, you know, I, I was initially kind of planning like I was gonna wait until that one to go visit. But then I just, like I said, like woke up and I was like, no, let's let's make this happen. Um, People have to know that Georgia is not really far away from France. Right. But the, the travel is quite hard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I Every flight there was going to be a connection. And the flights that I took, there were two connections. I stopped in Frankfurt and Munich. And I remember the, like the, the, the last flight from Munich into Tbilisi. Uh, you know, I just saw the Georgians packed up against the, the line ready to go. And Did you recognize the, the face. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're all like gruff, like uh, mountain men, right? Like, and uh, it was it was ex already exciting to see that. Um, 
but yeah, like a, a total leap of faith because like we said, like Toko, Toko is really good French. Um, it was a small group of people that I got thrown into an Instagram chat with, uh, <laughs> and I just like messaged them like, Hey guys, like I only speak English here, right? Like I know no French, like some French, right? Like as much as Duolingo has taught me, but like still not enough, right? Like, um, like I don't want to be a burden, but you know, I'm, I'm coming and, and hopefully like uh, we have a good, great time. Um, you know, I mean, to, to go say that he was really happy to have you, right? Because of the your level, you know, right? Thing. Right. So I, I brought some some very good athletes to the camps, yeah, mostly girls, but uh, I think no one of your weightlifting level. And the first thing he told me when you, I, I think it was after one or two days you were there, was uh, if he stayed here with us, he could be very, very, very good. That's you know, and I really appreciate that. And like I could tell, so when I first came in there's so much to say about this experience it was crazy uh, just, just to finish on the travel uh, part when you arrived at BDC uh, was the travel over or you had to do like no yeah yeah it something? was it's so it was so crazy because like leading into this like I had no expectations my only two expectations were I want to go to Georgia uh, I guess three expectations. I want to meet Toko, like a good friend of yours, right? Like, and I just want to train. That's it. Like, those were the, my only expectations. And then a couple days out within that group chat was just like, oh, we're going not to Tbilisi, we're going to Dusheti. I didn't even read into it. I don't know what that means. Um, and then we're like, we're going to be able to train with the national team. Again, this is all in French. So like, I can Google translate this, but I'm also at the same time like, I have no expectations. I'm not going to read into this. I'm not like, oh, I'm going to meet Asenize, Lasha, like, you know, uh, Rezi, right? Like, I, I, I didn't think about any of that. Like, Dushiti is the oldest gym. Yeah, I think right. Like it's, I, I won't say the shittiest. It's not the, the, the term, but it's not brand new. Right. But yeah. it's the most famous. Yes. It's, yes. I think the, the name of the gym is Asanidi. Yes. Yeah. 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 And uh, most of the videos we can see of Lasha. Right. Lifting Re heavy. It's Rezi. all from this this small like it's. I'm telling you, it is a small little barn because there's an identical barn behind it that's literally a barn yeah. and filled with hay. Exactly. <laughs> and I, I think you got like this this gym. And you got the wrestling gym. Yeah, right yeah, yeah. And you got like the rugby field. Yeah. And it's like a sport, but it's Georgia. It's not. Yeah, US. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, like he, uh, you just said, like as soon as I got into uh, Tbilisi, it was 4 a.m. Uh, I hardly slept, right? Like I slept a little bit on both flights uh, at the beginning, and then like woke up. Um, and as soon as I land, I, I cross through uh, border crossing. Thankfully, you know the 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 agent just like spoke, said thank you, right? Like that was it, right? Like that's as much English as was necessary. And uh, and then- started to talk to me in Georgia when I was- <laughs> <laughs> uh, And then thankfully, like I, I started going downstairs and Toko was like right there, right? Like, and he had a bag and then I'm thinking like, we're gonna stop into a hotel, like, you know, no problem. But like you said, there was more travel. So it was another hour from after having two flights into, you know, the Georgia mountains, right? Right, like, um, so I'm really going off for for me. Like this, I was as far away from home as I've ever been in my life. Right, like, uh, 11 hours difference um, from from uh, California and uh, eight hours difference from uh, North Carolina. And uh, an American in ex USSR country. Yeah, yeah, and like, but also you know uh, ex Soviet. But this is a country, like you said, that like loves Americans. They love Europeans. Right, like they're a part of the European. Yeah. Community. You see the European flag everywhere. Everywhere they want to join the yes. European. Yes. Yeah. Union. They. Um, yeah. It's it's such an interesting country. It's where Stalin is from, right? Like. Yeah. So it, it was really interesting because somebody with my mustache was like, Stalin, Stalin. Like he wanted to invite me into his home and like super like, but so but they also like hate, you know. <laughs> I hate I hate to say this, but they hate Russia, right? Like they they hate these guys that have like had their thumb on them for years now, right? And like they they want to be close to the United States, they want to be close to Europe, so that they they have an identity separate from. What, what did Toko say? If you if you meet uh, homeless people or a yeah yeah, they it's were a Russian guy. They, if if they're on the street, they're Russian, and like it was very dismissive, um, you know, and like 
that you know that's the reality that they live right like um, well, I you know when we were in Batumi it was uh, last summer mm -hmm. we had some troubles like with with some guys yeah. drunk and yeah. they were from Russia yeah. we never had any trouble with uh, yeah 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 with uh, Ukrainians with uh, Georgians right yeah, but with Russians right and then also like I started asking Toko about like his opinions of like neighboring countries right like Armenia Azerbaijan uh, Turkey and like it was really interesting as an American to like hear his opinion so like first he was like he hates Armenians but then he was like actually like they're like they're, 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 they're our they're brothers but unfortunately brothers stab you in the back right like and so like that's you know I would have never had that perception if I hadn't asked right like I asked him Azerbaijan like what is he and he loves Azerbaijani which like was surprising to me because I know that Armenians and Azerbaijani like it's they're war. at war with uh, each other right now uh, and then like Turks he was just like whatever uh, so like yeah like uh, I'm getting all this like in a mountain valley town right like there's nothing going on in this it's town a really small town this it's a small town it's you know like you see the whole like city like from the Olympic uh, house yeah. and like it's actually pretty like there's a lot of space there's farms right like um, it's a cute town but there's nothing going on right like you know we were kind of in the the town square there's a cinema right by there's a, a couple like there's a supermarket and then there's a lot of small it's markets not Charlotte. yeah yeah it's not Charlotte at all and um, yeah just like and not much going on which is good right like so the first day yeah, you went for training you said so right exactly it, it, tracks, it was perfect tracks. and like and for for also for the teams the junior uh, men's team and the senior men's team it's perfect for them because there's no distractions when you got there you had the opportunity to train with the junior team but then right. they left to european juniors yes yeah yeah right. so okay. they were there for four days so i actually met uh Asanize's son kaki um the first day um uh Toko was like, if you stay up a little bit longer, because I was ready to go take a nap. Um, uh, he was like, if you stay up a little bit longer, you can meet some of the Georgia team. So I met Kaki. Actually, Kaki, his English is amazing um, for whatever reason, right? Like, um, I think Kaki and Rivas are the only one I can talk to when, uh, like when we were in uh, Armenia for Europeans yeah, yeah, yeah. in the training hall. Yeah. Those were the two I, I could talk to because they was, and maybe the doctor. Right. Probably. Yeah. Um, and so like that was one person, but unfortunately like he was gone the entire time because he was off to European juniors like immediately. So the light, lighter weight class guys had left the, as soon as I got in. Then the heavier guys stayed until Thursday. So uh, the first day, um, land, drive an hour all the way out to Duchetti, and, uh, and then uh, took a nap, woke up, first training session at like 11 uh, noon. And uh, first thing I walk into is a senior men's team uh, lifting. They were just finishing up. And like, I'm, you know, awestruck because like you said, like this is the, the gym where all these big lifts that we have seen over the years, like happens. Like um, the biggest lift in the history of humanity. I mean, absolutely. Honestly. Like within training, right? Like, and it's a small gym. There's 10, 12 platforms. 12 platforms, yeah. 12 platforms. I've got, I've got a gym tour. It's, it's in French, but I've got a gym tour right. uh, on the channel where you can see the platforms, yeah. the GHGs, yeah. everything you can find in this gym. And it's so the fridge with the yeah, yeah. With, the <laughs> with the ice. Uh, it's so funny because like I watched a bit of that gym tour, and still like I couldn't relate to it at all until I was there, right? Like, and it's the atmosphere inside. That's it's so small. It's it's very intimate. Uh, there's not a ton of machines or anything. Um, I in remember the middle of nowhere. right in the middle of nowhere, and like you said, like. Uh, friends was like, oh, so like, how is it on the Olympic campus? Like, this is not a campus, right? Like, this is like... They say it is. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> right? And like, it was like a, a five minute walk into, there's a soccer field, you know, there's a basketball court, yeah, right? Like, to go cross like the... Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, like there's there's street dogs and like some of them are tagged, I'm sure. Cows. Cows. Uh, one day walking into the gym, there there is a farmer that has like a herd of cows and they were just eating wild grass right in front of, you know, the, the gym that's called uh, Asanidze, right? Like, and, uh, you know, you know, that's what they're doing, right? Like, I, I, it's, it's crazy. I have some video of it. It's, it, it's so charming. Uh, but then, like, you step inside and you see, I think 
One of the things I'm really trying to avoid when talking about this is like, I want to avoid talking about Lasha because- Because everyone would be talking about Lasha. Everybody would be talking about Lasha, but also like, as I have stated on social media, like he's just one of the guys, right? Like he is important because he's, in Toko's words, the team captain. But like Toko went and coached here in the gym for two months. Yeah, he told told to us that he was not going to have some uh, favorites right. between the athletes right. because Asanizé doesn't. Lasha is getting treated equally to yes. the other one, so yes. Toko wanted to do the same here. Right, and and that's something that like I really want to take like. If I can take anything away from my experience in Georgia, it is that where nobody, whether you are the strongest man within this sport of all time, nobody is treated differently. And so like within the junior team, I would say the dynamic is a little bit different because they're all young men that are like coming up yeah. and they're, they're trying to eventually make it onto the senior team. But within the senior team, Everybody was having a good time. They're all good guys, right? Like they're all sweet, uh, very kind. Like if you say hello, you know, they responded kind, right? Like, and they're all lifting heavy and they're all their own version of Lasha, right? Like they're either the best at 55 kilos, they're either the best at 61, 67, all the way up to, to Lasha. Uh, the only difference being like, if, if Lasha is any bit different within those guys is like I said, he's the team captain, right? So like, um, before him, I forget the guy's name. The other super? I, I, I know that, yeah, the other super. Uh, Who placed uh, third at... Uh, in, in, in Rio. In Rio. So he was the team captain before Lasha. Um, and so that really helped guide Lasha into the position that he is in now, which is like the greatest of all time. Like if he didn't have this team environment where Asenize did not uh, pick favorites, right? Like witness like, you know, the generational talent that we have in front of each other, because each of these guys are, are generational talents, right? Like, um, um, for the record, the junior team placed first at the uh, last Europeans. Right, yeah. They got the most medals. Yes, and I, I, I'd say like, we would always train directly after the juniors. So the way it would go was the senior team would, would train probably like, I'm gonna assume like nine or 10. Um, and then the junior team would train around like, you know, 10 or 11, and our little group, which was uh, originally four French women, one Swiss German, one and, American. and one American, and eventually we were joined by uh, you know another weightlifter from here, Claire, uh, so that was five within the second week, five, five French women. Um, we, uh, we trained after the team had, the teams had like finished up with their training. Um, so, you know, the first couple of days were a little hectic because it was so many people training at once. That I don't know if you ever met the, uh, the cleaning lady, yeah. but she, <laughs> course, yeah. after the first day, uh, she got so mad at Toko because like, obviously this is this woman's job to clean up around the gym, sweep a little bit. And then you could see her just like, uh, I'm sure she was cussing him out in Georgia and just like, you're wasting my time. <laughs> because she's, she knows to go for like she has been right yeah, uh, yeah for like 15 years yeah 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 so like of course like this is Toko's it's job like the to, uh, yeah 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 and so like uh, trying to it also along with it like nobody's treated differently like uh, with nobody gives any special treatment and like all the the older women within this like the Olympic house this lady the cleaning lady they all treat these these guys as their sons right like they're all it's so community based and uh, and just getting cussed out by like this lady because you know he's he's holding up the her time right like she has to wait another hour for us to to be doing our bullshit little like training camp right like, um, just, it, it was so charming, yeah. Before going more in depth with the training, yeah. can you talk about a bit about the, the food and the hotel? Yeah, so like, and, and I, I... Like, it's not a good thing to be a vegan in, the, in Georgia. <laughs> it's not, You yeah. won't be able to get your, your nutri nutrients if you're vegan, I think. The, the food was like, uh, outside of the Olympic house. The Olympic house, uh, which you, you call it a hotel, that's one way to put it, in my opinion, like, it, it's not that it's not a hotel, but like. But every other places we went were hotel, and it was the only one that was like, a, how to say, uh, 
How do you call? How would you call it? It's like a dorm. Yeah, a dorm. Uh, it's like a dorm. Um, I didn't get the, the word in, in English. Right, 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 right. Yeah, and like uh, to me, I loved it. I love that it was a dorm. Uh, so what happens in Duchetti and these other places? It, um, it feels like you're in the seventies when you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it, but it's a rotation. So like. The weightlifters, not just the weightlifters, live in this in this storm for a few weeks, a month at a time. Yeah, I think it's three weeks for the training camps every single right. time. And um, and so they go from Duchetti to Bakuriani to Batumi to yeah. Tbilisi, all over, all throughout the country. And it's not just them, but judo comes through, soccer comes through, um, wrestling, wrestling, like you name it. If it's an Olympic sport, it comes to the Olympic house. And within the storm, there's uh, men and women that like take care of the place. There's a security guard, um, and that like all these, I forget the the Georgian term, but in you know in my American uh, mindset, I'm calling them babushkas, right? Like you know grandmothers that are just like taking care of like the food, laundry, they, laundry. They yeah. they they're cleaning the ha uh, cleaning each of the the rooms whenever we needed it cleaned. Um, so like most of your needs are, are catered for in that, that sense, right? Like so you can just focus on lifting weights and recovering for the next time you have to lift weights. Um, the, the food, the, yeah. three times a day, morning, it's eggs, it's breakfast, sausages, meats, right? Like um, some type of, you know, like if you, uh, there, there's, uh, there were beets and Orange carrots, porridge, uh, yogurts and milks. So like, you know, to get you charged up for the day. Like at least half of what they eat is from animal products. Yes, like yes. Dairies. Mm -hmm. Uh, meat, right. stuff, eggs. Yeah, so. yeah, and like we had some. Um, they did try to cater to um, dietary restrictions. So one of our girls who was from Paris, she eats halal. So like you know, uh, I'm sure that means like uh, no pork. No pork, and the food got to be killed with the halal. Uh, right. Um, so like. The women, uh, the the ladies taking care of the food, like did as best as they could for that. I didn't mention any of my dietary restrictions, which just includes allergies, right? Like, um, and you know, I just ate eggs. Like, I, I ate what was prepared and didn't mention like that kind of stuff. But I know if I did, they would have taken care of me. We're in the mountains. There's no fish, right? Like, I'm allergic to fish, so like, I knew that like I didn't have to really mention it, right? Um, during lunch. Uh, there's going to be some meat. There's going to be some type of fruit, whether that's a peach or or peaches or watermelon, right? Like, uh, there, uh, soup. Soup was a big thing for, lunch, yeah. for lunch. And and Toko told me uh, it was an obligation to drink the soup, uh, which is just like it's a hot like it's summer. I wouldn't say it's exceptionally hot, but like you know, within the the barn, the 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 training hall, it can get really warm and like muggy in there. Um, so yeah, just like lunchtime, you have to drink the soup, whatever the soup of the day was. Uh, and it was always amazing. Um, and then for dinner, again, meat, bread, right? Like throw some butter on your bread. You got to get your calories in, um, and like some type of vegetable. I think they eat a lot of fat. Yeah. 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 Oil and butter. Are right. Yeah. Yeah. Way too much. Yeah. And, and me personally, like I, Having been so used to trying to get meat in, like as as a part of my meals, um, you know, at a certain point, like uh, there was pasta as well, right? Like at a certain point, my stomach was just like uh, a rock. Like I, I just like wasn't, I couldn't digest the food that I was I was eating. Training twice a day, right? Like there's so much stress that you're going through that I started uh, to much of the uh, vegetables. You have to vegetables for sure, but then like to the dismay of like. Uh, and as a joke for the dismay of my roommate and as a joke for the rest of the, the group, they were all laughing because I would always take the food back to my room to like eat for later. Kind of stunk up the, the room a little bit every now and then. And then like, I think, yeah, uh, the, the ladies cooking the food always knew that I was going to come down later. It, you know, it was, it was a bit funny, but uh, yeah. Uh, you talked to me about the supplements too. That yeah. Um, at so, the beginning, you have no idea that they took supplements, but they talked to... Right. I, I asked Toko about it later. Um, you know, one of the guys gave me his uh, no explode pre-workout. Um, as a shock to everybody, I, I love good coffee. 
and the only coffee that they provided was instant coffee. Oh. So, uh, everywhere, you know, like I, I didn't turn my nose up to it. Like I said, I came here to train and I trained like a Georgian, right? Like, and experience this, you know, again, I didn't turn my nose up to anything. Uh, I was drinking a lot of, uh, either like essentially Red Bulls, like, you know, like, uh, caffeine drinks. Um, and then like eventually one of the Georgians uh, gave me his extra no explode, like pre-workout. Um, very sweet, very kind, right? Like, but they're also offered like, uh, other supplements, just like whey protein. So I'm wondering how these guys are like showing up to each of these meals eating. I'm not paying attention closely to how much they're eating, but like, how does Lasha keep on like so much mass? Well, I'm sure that like a little bit of protein goes a long way. <laughs> Have you eaten with Lasha? No. So like, uh, out of respect on a certain level, like our little group of seven would always sit by ourselves separate from the guys, um, just like a, a room away, not a big deal. Like I'm sure we could have intermixed a little bit more, but you know, yeah. Like he's 400 pounds, yeah. I'm 200. He de definitely doesn't eat twice as much as me. Right. But Rivas does. Right, yeah. You've, uh, you've eaten uh, Hinkadis? Sorry? Hinkadis. Which one's that? It's like the, the pasta with the meat inside. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You yeah, can yeah. eat like 50. Okay. Yeah, 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 and yeah. If you, if you eat like 12 or 13, it's quite good. That was probably one of my favorite foods. Like yeah. I would always I would always carry some and, and keep it for later and try to take you it with me. You the, the juice from inside. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, uh, I, at the end of it, I was always walking away from like liter containers of juices and just like, you know, like trying to get my carbs in, you know? And talking about supplements, I know that the, the coaches, they give them uh, like a list of mm -hmm. things to, to take right but it's it's mostly what we take in the west too like Absolutely. animal pack animal right. uh, animal right. flex right uh, universal nutrition and stuff we, we we take in the west too something i don't think i mentioned uh to louis before was that um i witnessed some really heavy lifts and the day that i was witnessed the heaviest lifts i've ever seen in my life um whether that's amongst like everybody in lasha of course uh, they got drug tested. They got drug tested by USADA. Over here, it's called Adams. Um, yep. They call it Adams. And yeah, they just showed up for the morning session. Um, they, the, the team got their training in. And at the end of it, there were two Turkish folks. There was a Turkish doctor and a Turkish, I believe, like handler, and then two Georgian handlers. What reason why I bring this up? Do you, do you want to? Do you mind uh, talking about about drugs? Sure. I yeah. Think, I think we have to. Right. Like yesterday night, uh, Kahia Sanizi got popped. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So when when the, the video will be available, it will be like one week before. Right. Uh, it's the second case for Ge from for Georgia. Yeah. After Anton Plesnoy. Right. So if they got a third case, they are out of the Olympics. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, people from France. I think it's mostly people from Toku Old Club. Right. They posted some things online. I didn't show you, hmm. uh, saying do not go to Georgia because uh, the coach is going just to give you uh, steroids. Yeah. So so you can if you go to Georgia and make progress, it's because you're going to take some drugs. Right. Um, <laughs> Did someone offer you drugs when you were in Georgia? No, no, they didn't. So like the what I wanted to bring up here is that like when I messaged friends uh, what was going on with me in Georgia and like people are going to say things that are like it, it's obvious that somebody was going to mention something like that right like um, and what I bring up about them getting drug tested by USADA while I was or not USADA um, WADA, WADA, WADA WADA sorry um, was that like there's this perception that these uh, countries separate from the West uh, play by different rules than we do. And that's clearly not the case. That's not what I witnessed. I witnessed Lasha peeing in a cup. Or I didn't watch him pee in the cup. But like I, I watched him right, like get drug tested just like I have in the past out of competition. Um, and two other guys get, get drug tested out of competition, right? Like it's not that they get to run off to the mountains and they're not, uh, they're not following the same rules that we are. Um, just like you said, like uh, uh, they still get popped for whatever reason that may be. Um, and uh, I have no doubt that like my colleagues, you know, my peers within US weightlifting, within French weightlifting, that like they saw me go off to Georgia and lift heavy weights and like, oh, that must be because he was taking steroids, right? Yeah, like, but you, you saw the environment and it's true that if 10 people go to a training camp, like eight of them are going to PR right. at, the, at the end of two weeks because you 
you train so much, right. you eat a lot, you have no stress outside of the of the, the training. Right. You got like one or two coaches that are watching every single lift. Uh, you have the, the people around you, like the environment is going to make you progress. I think right. on the last two training camps, I was the only one who didn't PR. Right. And like yeah. Camille, my girlfriend who stayed three months in the in Georgia, yeah. she trained during three two three months with right. the junior team every single time with a coach with her at every single training. Right. So if you gain like three kilos on your snatch and clean and jerk, it's not drugs, it's just the environment. Right. Yeah. And you've seen the junior team train. Right. You see the guys who are uh, like the sub juniors, like 13, 14, you see them train, they are not using drugs and they are right. better than us right. just because they are more serious about right. training. They got the, the system around them. Right. You see the kids at 10, they come to the gym and the coach say, you're going to warm up, he leaves the room and you see the, like 20 kids going for their warm ups. Right. They are not on TikTok, right. like, like we, we would be right. in France, in the US, but we got some jealous people in the West saying that right. it's only the drugs right. and that's it. Yeah, no, the, the whole system is made to create good weightlifting um, and that's from top to bottom and like very thankfully like I had trained like this in the past uh, when I trained in, in a hybrid with, with Medina and Fernando. Um, you know, I was, the, the people that were out there, there were two masters women, there were two 19 year old girls and there was one 32 year old guy, like um, somebody of uh, my age uh, just about. And like the only, the reason why like I handled it the best was because I had been exposed to that type of training previously. You've known this with, uh, Medi with Medina, with uh, Fernando. Right. And like um, that's why like Toko within a couple of days did say that like I had a lot of potential. It's not because uh, I am especially gifted, uh, but it's because like having been through that system before, Kami, right? Like she was there for three months. She got banged up. She got a little hurt. I really believe that like anybody who goes through the system understands like, you know, how much you need to take a step back, but how much you need to push, right? Like, you know, that fine line, like within two days, I had already a couple of injuries started creeping up a little bit, but I was smart enough to not get, you know, overwhelmed by I'm here in Georgia, right? Like I, I looked out for myself. I made sure that, that I, I did some extra exercises to, to make sure that those, you know, sudden flare ups didn't like ruin my entire experience. Um, yeah, I'm, not, I'm not saying that there is no drugs in the Georgian weightlifting. I know that people don't understand this because when we came back, uh, plenty of people from the gym got tested. Right. And yeah. Like at, the, yeah. at the last national championships, yeah. Morgan got tested, Camille got, got tested. Right. Camille is on Adam Snow, so she can yeah. be tested. Yeah. I, I have. Of. So like I was in the USADA pool uh, back in the States uh, when I was considered for international teams. And like I have no doubt like training with Medina, right? Like uh, Medina is one of the most like tested people I've ever met, right? Like he's gets tested within double digits, um, always comes out clean, right? Like, and I can't speak for anybody, right? Like I can only speak for myself. I have no doubt by the time I go back into the US that like I'm probably gonna get tested. I, I have no doubt that one of these days that, you know, uh, Adams might show up and wanna test me and I'm gonna have to comply to that, right? Like, and I'm not, I'm gonna have no stress about it because- like, I think it's a bit dumb to think that you have to go to Georgia for two weeks to, to take drug. You can do it in the US, you can right. do it in France. And, and, and for two weeks, it's not going to change anything. Right, and also like, like you had just, uh, said that like I didn't PR while I was out there I hit big numbers right like but uh, neither of my uh, competition lifts got better right like I just hit numbers that I'd hit in the past you came back to your previous level before the elbow injury right basically. right and and now is like a bit of a reset to like so I can reach those new numbers which is just breaking beyond myself yeah I can train like I had in the past like for two weeks um, and and see similar numbers but to break beyond that is like what I'm interested in doing uh, next right like and that's gonna require you know taking the lessons that I learned that I'd relearned while I was with the Georgians to to my training within the next few months uh, leading up to my next competition how much time do you think you can manage to to train in Georgia in a training camp without injuring yourself or like hitting a plateau <laughs> how much time that's that's a great question um, I, I got my answer for the girls right there yeah. I know that Camille three months was a bit too much right like after two months she yeah. was getting way better after two months she, she was getting tired yeah she 
she tore her suppress spinatus. You super spinatus, yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, and it was a bit the same from for Lorraine one yeah. year before. Yeah. Because she trained like three months under Toku. Really? After two months, she yeah, was yeah. the best she ever ever been. Right. She like 110 power clean and jerk. Yeah. But after the two two months, she she needed like two to three months to recover from this. Yeah. Yeah, like she was burned out. Um, and having asked him about like their preparation. I know that they fall, like we said before, like all training's the same, right? Like that once the world championships are done the, it, this coming September, in a couple of weeks, um, they're going to go back to squats. Um, Muscle snatch, push press, and sweat. And, squat, and, and jumps, right? Like, um, and eventually they're going to go back to sports specificity, right? Like I think when you train in that professional style, which is like eventually you just go to sports specificity, you can't do it for that long, right? Like, and if and when you do, like you need, you need to cut yourself from distractions. You also need to let loose a little bit. While we were out there, Lasha was riding around on motorcycles. They were all riding around on mo motorcycles. Uh, Have you seen them play football, soccer? No, I haven't, yeah. Like there is a, um, there is a football field right beside the restaurant yeah, yeah. in the yeah. Olympics. Uh, yeah. Every single night, the juniors used to play to. Yeah, there were, uh, there were kind of uh, a ton of the town's kids that were playing out there. There's a volleyball court right, right there. Like it was really, it was adorable, it was charming. Um, like I, I love that, I, I saw this little goth couple, like, you know, like uh, goth in, in the other side of the world, um, you know, like, and like, they're just teenagers, like trying to sneak, uh, smoke cigarettes, right? Like at probably 13, 12 or 14, right? Like, yeah, it, it's the same, right? Like it, life is the same no matter where you go. There's gonna be, there's gonna be a place to play. There's gonna be kids. There's gonna be adults like looking after their kids. There's gonna be dogs in the area. Yeah. It was gorgeous, yeah. What do you think about assistance work and bodybuilding in, in Georgia? Yeah, I asked, uh, I asked Toko about it and he was just like, we don't do too much of that, right? Like, um, they love to do a couple of back extensions. Uh, they don't have machines. I remember- I, like, like press, I think, for those that suffer from knee. knee yeah, 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 just like, so like, and that's all if like, you want to do something extra uh, outside of the, the back extensions. Um, I specifically had to like, when you hear that, like, sure, that's that's a direction because like it's exhausting doing like heavy weightlifting all the time. As a clean athlete, as like you know somebody who knows my body, I had to do a ton of core work because my back is like way overdeveloped. Um, I don't really need to do too many back extensions like all the time because like I use my back all the time. Uh, that's not like anything specific, but like knowing myself, like. Uh, my elbow was kind of bugging me while I was out there because I was lifting heavy again. You need elbow extension, uh, pronosopination. And, uh, and it was funny because then I would watch some of the guys like do assistance work. Um, and I, I need to know his name, but he's like, they're 67. And he just took a 10 kilo plate. <laughs> he, no, no, no. He sat at the end of a massage uh, table. He put it on oh, his yeah, shin <laughs> and then did leg extensions with just a 10 kilo grand plate, like for like not even two sets. So it was just like a little bit, chatted a little bit and then did a little bit more and that was it. You know, like, you know, it, it, that's, but that's as simple as like bodybuilding needs to be most like, of the time. Quick story, when we were just with Camille and Georgie in Dushetti, uh, Toko told us we are going to make a, a bodybuilding session with the, the, the team and the session was some jumps. Yeah. And then they had a 12 kilo kettlebell. Yeah. Kilo is, what, is 20 pounds? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 25 yeah, pounds? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe 30 pounds? Right. It was like 10 kettlebell snatch on one arm, 10 push ups, 10 kettlebell snatch on the other arm, five, five rounds of this, and then you can go home. And that, that was, and even the supers, they were, they were with the small kettlebell. Yeah, yeah. This. <laughs> and Camille was saying, but it's not, it's not bodybuilding. And right, right, right. But also at the same time, it completely is, right? Like, yeah, because they, they, they were doing the, the day before three pounds with 250 in the squat. Yeah. Same thing in the pulls, yeah. same thing in the push presses, so yeah. they don't need to go too heavy in the... Yeah, like I, I think, again, having trained like this before, Sean and I used to always talk about it, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, they're bullshit days. Now, that's not always the case. Uh, I remember... It's the same in Georgia. Right, absolutely. It's, it's not, oh yeah, bullshit days, it's, it's going to be like back push press. Yes, yeah, yeah, so it's back snatch. push press. I, I, watched, uh, I watched one of the new up and coming stars, 
I watched him clean a jerk up to 200 kilos the day before, and the very next day. Seventeen year old guy. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, he. Um, he hit 200 kilos in, in the clean jerk, and the very next day, all he did was some um, push back push presses at 120 kilos. I did the same thing with 110, right? Like, you know, and that was like the training for the day. Like, there were two exercises, and it was go home. They right? never like, go heavy two days in a row. Right. It's Monday, Wednesday, Friday heavy. Right. And but then, like, I will say, uh, the Thursday of week one, we had uh, snatch balance, and uh, I could say that my next day I only snatched up to 137 kilos um, I could say that like I asked Toko if I could put on straps or whatever uh, but the day before I probably could have snatched balance 150 but I struggled a little bit and I had to stay at 140 so the thing about the program is that it it sets you up to like at any point that you can and will go heavy you'll be allowed to right like um, whether that's with an assistance exercise like like snatch balance or a special exercise right like um, if the coach feels that you're in a good shape you're going heavy right um, or right and, and to see like where you're at right um, also very interestingly like I saw two max out sessions happen on Wednesday, right? Like rather than Big Friday, right? Like, which here a little bit in France, right? Like, but definitely in the States right now, the big thing is Big Friday, like every week. Um, and to go max out and go off program and don't listen to your coach. Um, I know it's not exactly like that. Um, I fell into that, even training with Fernando and Medina, where Big Friday was just snatch, clean and jerk, squat. squat, right? Like, and, and like go heavy. And they didn't do that, right? Like, we understand them to having, like, doing sports festivity and weightlifting, but there's no celebration of weightlifting within calling it Big Friday, right? Like, and even so, they are not going to do snatch and clean and jerk in the same session. Right. Big Friday, they are going to do snatch in the morning, clean and jerk in the Absolutely, same. yeah, yeah. Um, so, you know, like, it, they, they are smart about their training. You have Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Those are going to be big, heavier days in general. You've talked about going off programs. Have you witnessed a lot of misses in training? Yeah. No, no. Uh, when, when they went heavy, is when you would see misses. And like that would be one person that was struggling with a specific weight. Um, and I saw some heroic makes after like a few misses. Because these are professionals and they need to improve. A few misses is not a big deal. But when most, it's most of the misses are in the snatch, right? You yeah. Always, if, yes. if you see a miss in the clean and jerk, most of the time they are going to the next exercise. Yes, yeah. Um, yeah, and it was stubbornness. Not only just stubbornness, but like, uh, I, I kept kind of like talking them down and Toko kept saying like, no, 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 like it's mindset, right? So like they kept, if they, there was two lifters specifically that I, I saw a miss a few times. And again, like the team is very supportive, nobody special. Um, the coach would get around them, the whole team would get around them to make their next lift. Um, tense environment, like as soon as somebody's going for a lift, there's a little bit of cheering on just like anybody else. Um, Everything is intense. But the music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, and then, like, the music would cut out. So, like, certain days, like, the music is, like, what, top 40 pop hits. Radio, yeah. Yeah, yeah, like, it's either a Georgian or, like, literally, like, there was some mind-numbing, like, American pop songs that were, like, playing, like, one day, right? And, like, I I didn't want to listen to it, but, like, you know, that's, that's what they were listening to. And I wasn't going to say anything, right? But, like, uh, you know, like, that's what they're listening to. Once the lifts got really heavy... It, no music. It, you can't hear like the, you can hear a pin drop, right? Like it, it's it's definitely quiet. And um, yeah, it just like like I said, like uh, everybody's cheering each other on. Nobody's getting any bit louder for Lasha as they are than anything else, right? Like, and it's not like let's go, like you know. But it's just like giving advice, just like anybody else. Uh, I got you know, yeah. Uh, uh, I, I'm trying to remember the Georgian word, Dzlerat, uh, Dzlerat. It's um, Dabai. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and then you hear a little we bit of Dabai, we got Let's Go, we got Ali. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I, asked, uh, I asked Toko about Dabai because I've heard Dabai and that's Russian. And he's like, 
don't say that. I was like, okay. Even though I hear Lasha like consistently said, no, I was like, all right, like, disleret <laughs> is is the the Georgian word for lift or let's go. Um, yeah, and just really cool to watch uh, witness like what four coaches walk, walking around and watching each of their athletes um, when all the coaches were gone except for one um, for the junior team you had just the one coach and like these are professional weightlifters they're all not just like watching themselves but they're also watching our tiny little camp of lifters <laughs> and giving advice like yeah. if they stick around you had Gizo as a coach which one's that I wouldn't doubt it his son is uh Irakli Gabrici um so that it was he was Toko old coach so he was there for the first few days. Um, that's that's the coach that ba like like you said from that small town where weightlifters all come yeah. from. Um, right. He's a very sweet guy, right? Like just very calm, very with cool hats, with the hat. Um, that's Lasha's old coach. That's Toko's old coach. That's everybody's essentially their their old coach. Yeah, basically he's the one that made the, the club in such a way. Right. Um, yeah. So he was there for the first few days, and then he left for Europeans. The coach that stuck around, he was formerly like a sixty. Seven and he clean and jerk like 170. It's really funny because he's really fat now. <laughs> um, sweet guy. I, I cracked a lot of jokes with him. Like every day at training, I would walk up and shake up his hand, or shake his hand. Um, he always received me well. He, his room was uh, the room across from mine, and I remember one day he came out his his door and as a joke, I was like, <laughs> you know, like, and I caught I caught him laughing, you know, like uh, they again. These are these are men. These are just regular people, and we don't speak any of the same language at all, Georgian and English, right? Like, but like body language goes a long way. You know, respect goes a long way. A fist bump. Uh, and you cannot get any single word in Georgian. No, no, uh, not one. Yeah, yeah. I uh, I want to learn more of the language if I can, at least speaking it, because like writing it is that's a waste of time. <laughs> I think well, when you hear a bit, uh, a bit of French, you can get some words. Yeah, that's absolutely. In Georgian, right. Yeah, yeah. Possible. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I, I hope I can connect with them a little bit more in the future. But like, uh, yeah, just it's it's a completely different language. It's not Russian. It's not French. Right. Like um, I remember the first day I met some Georgian and because I knew that we were going to be around like I was going to be around French people. I start. I asked this girl like, oh, are you French? She's like, no, I'm Georgian. I was like, oh, I'm so sorry. You know, like I, I'm just like within this new experience. That's yeah. Sorry. <laughs> um, and she spoke some English, which was nice actually in retrospect, but she was only there for the day. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, wow. <laughs> I, think, I think we we have a lot about this experience. Um, I know that Toko, because of you or thanks to you, wants to open the training camps to the to English speaking people. Uh, maybe the first one he will want me to be there because for of sure, English, absolutely, so, yeah, yeah, so it yeah. will be maybe easier for everyone. Right. Uh, main issue is going to be, I think, with doping. Yeah. You know, what's going to be with Georgia? Right. If they got popped a, a, a third time, I think the situation with the training comes can be a bit harder. Sure. But we will see in the next month. Uh, you can follow Toko on Instagram. I will put it on the the link on the the description because he is going to post about the training comes. Right. Uh, I would like to do one more with some of my my athletes too. Right. Maybe we will go together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll see, I yeah, I, uh, Toko wants me to stay a little bit longer. I would love to stay longer within um, it, within Georgia. Just to, again, like I I love training. I love training specifically weightlifting. Before and this, you have to go to London. Yeah, yeah. Next, next episode uh, in Benson's life in the in Europe is uh, London. Hopefully, hopefully, we'll <laughs> see. Um, but yeah, like uh, I, I'm hoping to make my way back out to Georgia and try to spend some time a little bit longer with Toko. Of course, if I can train with the either I the junior team, like <laughs> destroys me in weightlifting. Uh, there's no way I could even keep up with with the senior team. But like the junior team, like everyone was better than me, right? Like, uh, and that was. I think, I think the juniors are the most impressive. Because, oh, for sure. Because it's it's Georgian people, so even if you met some someone in the street who is 16, he looks 25, <laughs> and it's the same. It's the same for the weightlifters. So at, at, at the beginning, some of some of the guys were saying oh, they must be using some stuff because the 16-year-old guy they look 25. But yeah. then we went in the street with guys doing no sport at all, <laughs> and it was the same. I went to some guy and say the say to him, but how can you? 
uh, your youth, your young people can look so old yeah. and be like 17, 18, and yeah. you say, oh, I don't think so. Yeah. I, say, well, uh, I think he was like 35 for me. Yeah. I said, but how, how, how old are you? He was 17. I think. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like they have kids already, you know, like uh, there's a 17 year old phenom that like has like two kids, you know, like it, they're, they're just actually approached with like real life, you know, like uh, well, issues, right? Like, like you said, uh, like uh, a lot of a lot of these kids' parents, they they died in the war, right? Like uh, not too long ago, that was a decade ago. Uh, three decades ago, they were part of the Soviet Union, right? Like, and uh, and when when the, the the Russia left after the, the end of the USSR, yeah. like they destroyed everything. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything they put in Georgia, yeah, like the the plants, the yeah. the industry, they destroyed everything when they left. So yeah. they, they left the country like uh, empty. That's Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the yeah. Georgian had to rebuild it. It took like maybe 20 years to, to build a country like you, you saw it. Right. And even now you saw the construction cons constructions everywhere. Yeah, yeah. The, the There's country. a lot of, there, it, it's funny. Um, I wanted to make some comparisons to the United States because again, this place is so charming. Like there are empty buildings, um, but like nothing that like compares to, if anybody's ever been to Detroit, Memphis, uh, I'm trying to think of another city, uh, Columbus. So places that I visit because of weightlifting. Uh, we've seen the meme on the why you. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Even in Europe, we know about why you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, they are like, they are empty cities most of the time. And yeah, there's certain parts of town that like are, are kind of like uh, uh, empty, but like it's, it's no different in my opinion, right? Like it's, it's a very similar experience. Um, Tbilisi looks futuristic in certain areas. Like there's a huge mall, yeah. right? Like there's some, there's some grand infrastructure that I'm sure came up after like the Soviet yeah, Union course. left, right? Like when Georgia had it in, its independence. And then you go to a small mountain town and it's just a small mountain town, right? Like they're gonna have a soccer field for, for the kids and everything. Um, yeah, it was, it, it was, it was really charming. The, the community is so much stronger than I have seen within the States, right? Like there's people that are sweeping the streets, right? Yeah. Like, and, and my Swiss roommate, like he just mentioned that like, uh, we took a gondola ride up to the, the mother of Georgia statue. And there was like, PDC? huh? And PDC? Yes. Yeah. yeah. And there were four people between us and like getting into the gondola ride. And he was like, oh, in Switzerland, this would all be automatic and we will walk like straight into the gondola, no problem. And I just, I looked at it and I just mentioned, well, yeah, those are people's jobs, right? Like there's security, there's somebody that's checking like our, our tickets. There's somebody to make sure that we get onto the gondola correctly. And then there's somebody just kind of hanging out, right? Like, um, But those are people's jobs. There, there's people's jobs that are sweeping the streets. Yeah, you can make that all uh, futuristic and uh, high tech with like you know machines to make all that happen, uh, uh, automatic uh, street uh, sweepers. But like, there, I'm not here to say that, like everything needs to be conventional. You, you, you see an old woman with just a little little uh, uh, broomstick, yeah. broomstick, yeah, just like sweeping the street, and like. Again, like I'm not, I'm not here to say like conservative values are like so much better, but like that whole community is so much more tight knit uh, than I've ever experienced in Charlotte, in Goldsboro, even right? In like France, huh? even in mm -hmm. France, right? Like there's there's something really coming here in in France. Like you guys have. I've been around many holidays, right? Like uh, the storming of the Bastogne, and like you guys have events that happen because of it. Yeah, we have the 4th of July in the States, um, but it's really, it's a breath of fresh air to be around the, like, you know, actually community driven events, like held by the people, for the people, like, um, you know, I know on social media, I, I've been posting a lot about like being the American and like, you know, bringing freedom everywhere, but uh, that's all for show, that's all a joke, right? Like. Uh, Uh, I, George is amazing. France is amazing. Like, please come visit to these places because, like, they they're doing what we're doing within weightlifting, a little bit different, mostly the same, right? Like, as we said, yeah. It, training it, is the same. Training is the same, but like, different. <laughs> just expand your horizons by like coming to these places, eating these, eating the food, and 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 meeting the people. When you were in BDC, have you been to the spa? 
Yes, yeah, the spa was amazing, right? Like uh, something I've experienced in Miami, right? Like, but like just the sulfur baths, like was were so rejuvenating, right? Like, and was it too hot or good? It was pretty hot. That was the <laughs> hottest like hot tub I've ever yeah. been in. Um, yeah, Tuco tries to have like diverse activities outside of the gym too. So we yeah, yeah, yeah. Discover. Yeah. The the most impressive thing we did was uh, going into. Um, I'm going just to show you because I don't have the name, but it was underground. Uh, it's like in the Prometheus story. Okay. Like, and it, I think this is the one from the Prometheus story. And we went underground and uh, we, we saw, I think it's one of the deepest underground cavities in the world. Oh, interesting. Yeah, like he, he made sure that it wasn't just training. Like on, on a Sunday we went, uh, we drove. <laughs> three hours out of the way, we drove all the way up to the Caucasus Mountains to the, the Russian border to visit two churches, a monastery yeah. and a church up in the mountains. Um, gorgeous views. He tried, you know, like, I didn't understand anything because he was explaining all in French that like, you know, this is a part of like the uh, Georgian national like identity, right? Like, um, if you want to come to the monastery, like you can come here with no money and you can work on the monastery for, for the patriarch that's there. Look at that. Oh, wow. Yeah. Everything is underground. Nutty. And yeah. Some videos, some photos, some. Uh, he tried explaining videos. to us, like within the mountains, that uh, Tolkien, J.R.R. Tolkien, was inspired by the Caucasus Mountains uh, for to write the Lord of the Rings. That's not true. I, I researched it. Like, <laughs> the Georgian are proud, so there are, pl there are plenty of stories. Right. Like this. Right. Yeah. And yeah, like um, he was even relating it to how strong Lash is, right? Like, and w while that is certainly true within themselves, right? Like, I know it's not my place to like come in and say like everything you're saying is a lie, right? Like, but as long as they tell themselves those kinds of things, right? Like, it gorgeous fucking mountains, right? Like that. There, there are views there. There, there are people that like are separate from Russia, right? Like they're their own people, um, and they get. They, to they really are separated from the world. Yes. Like their yes. their language is really Georgian. Yes. They do not share anything with the, the countries uh, outside. Right. I think on one side it's the Mediterranean Sea. Mm -hmm. The other side is the. Oh, it's the Black Sea. Black Sea and Mediterranean. It is uh, on Batumi. Yeah. It's, uh, it's Caucasus on the yeah, north. Yeah. Yeah, small yeah. Caucasus on the south. So it's right. really the country is like surrounded by yeah. the, by yeah. the frontiers, and it's Georgia, and that's it. Yes. Yeah. It's they're they're very kind, tough, gorgeous people, um, and yeah, uh, eye-opening experience to be a part of. I I, I definitely hope to. to yeah, go Black back. Sea. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean. um, and. Yeah, I, you know, I, I think our, our experience is that we want other people to do it, of course, yeah, and of course. you know, this is, this can be seen as an ad to, to join, but like. Totally didn't give you any money to, to make an ad. No, 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 absolutely. Yeah, like I, I came on my own dime. I, I went to, to experience what Georgia was, like, a, you know, a culture, and, and I, I came away with an amazing experience, right? Like I. And then you came back to France, you had one, one week of rest, and then you could. Yeah, and uh, compete in the power contest, which was. Maybe we'll talk about the power contest and uh, what you're going to do in London in the next episode. Ouais. Yeah. Sounds good to me. Yeah. So we are, we are good for the Georgia? Yes. If uh, some of you get comments or questions, you can ask in the comments of the videos. Ouais. I think you'll be able to answer to some yeah. on YouTube. Yeah. I, will be able to, I will be able to if uh, it's not questions about Benson. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I think when you will come back from London, if you go to London, yeah. we will make an episode about London, right. your experience there, yeah. the power contest, and then the big one will be USA weightlifting, French right. weightlifting. Right. And when we what we can say about this. Yeah. Good? Perfect. See you guys. Ciao.